Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm here to tell you that it is not dangerous to walk on a wet roof. When I say it's not dangerous to walk on a wet roof, I'm talking about a clean asphalt shingle roof. Now, wood roofs, those are dangerous as all get out when they're wet. Don't ever set foot on a wet wood roof. I think the same thing goes with tile and slate and maybe even metal. I don't walk enough of those roofs to know any better. I'm going to assume they're dangerous when they're wet. But specifically, I'm talking about asphalt three-tab shingles or architectural shingles, just asphalt shingles. They're not any more dangerous when they're wet. I, and I, I say this from experience. I've been walking these roofs wet as long as I've been doing home inspections and I have never noticed any difference in the, uh, the we'll, we'll use the word gription of these roofs. I know it's not a word, but you know what I mean. No difference, wet or dry, my shoes grip the exact same way. Now that's the way it's always felt to me, but that's very subjective. And I've heard a lot of people say that it's very dangerous to walk on wet roofs. So I thought, you know, let's just quantify this. And what better way to do it then they get a whole bunch of different shoes, put them on a dry shingle and tug on them and then do the same thing when the shingle is soaking wet and see if there's any difference. So I decided to do some experimenting. I got a shingle, I fastened it down to a board and I got a whole bunch of different shoes and I put a strapper on them and a scale and I pulled on that scale to see how much weight I could get the scale up to. I pulled as slowly as I possibly could with every one of these tests and then I repeated everything again on the soap part of the shingle and well you know what I don't want to ruin the surprise let's just go through and see how it turned out so for my first test I'm using the Skechers casual shoes now I wouldn't use these for home inspections but I thought it'd be nice to have a little variety so I'm testing these out first I grab onto the scale and I'm giving it a nice gentle tug to see the max that I can get. And it ends up being about 30 pounds or so. Now for my next test, I'm using the Skechers work shoes. These are, these are what I actually use for home inspections typically. These are, they are slip resistant and these things are really grippy. I mean, even though they're slip on, they are very grippy shoes. I, I like these. So I'm, I'm giving this a nice little tug and it, it ends up being somewhere in the neighborhood of about, I don't know, 35 pounds, something like that. It'll, it'll consistently hold about 35 pounds. For the last one, I'm using the Cougar Paws. These are my roof walking shoes, that, or roof walking boots. This is what I change into when I've got some serious roof walking to do. I don't use them for low slope, but big roofs, steep roofs is what I use. So I'm giving us a nice tug and it's consistently right around 40, 45 pounds. Next, I'm going to get the shingle especially wet. Now I've already had it soaking for the last 10 minutes or so with a wet towel, but I, I get it extra wet to redo this test. So we're using the Skechers Casual shoes again. Remember when it was dry, it was about 30 pounds. Wet, it's about 30 pounds. Next, I'm using my Skechers work shoes. Now remember, when they were dry, I was able to get about 35 pounds of pull on these. Now here, I'm getting actually more than 35 pounds. It's, it's staying around 36. Now for my last test, I'm gonna use the Cougar Paws. Now, I'm doing the same test, it's all wet. And remember, when it was dry, it was around 45 pounds. When it's wet, this was the only shoe where there was a little bit of performance change I didn't quite get 45 pounds, but it came really close. I was able to get it up to somewhere around 44 pounds. It stayed there pretty consistently. So what do you think? No big surprises there, at least not for me. This is exactly what I expected to find. Now I know that somebody who's very involved in the scientific method is gonna say your testing is flawed because you were testing to find the results that you wanted to get. Yeah, I get it. I'm not a scientist, but uh, I think these results are still pretty solid. Wet roofs are not any more slippery than dry roofs. And I already disclaimed a bunch of this at the beginning of this video. 
And one, a couple other disclaimers. If the roof is covered in frost, that's slippery. I'm not talking about frozen water. I'm talking about liquid water. If the roof is covered in ice, that's slippery as all get out. If the roof has debris on it, wet, wet leaves, wet pine needles, algae growing on it, moss, any of that stuff, that's much more slippery when it's wet too. I'm just talking about a clean, wet roof. So uh, there, there's the results. And no surprise with any of this testing, the cougar paws outperformed everything. But you know, they're kind of a one trick pony. Cougar paws are made for walking on roofs and that's it. You're not supposed to be wearing them all over the yard and around the house. You put them on when you're walking on the roof. When you're done on the roof, you take them off. It gives you an added level of safety. So that concludes my testing. Uh, if I get enough requests, I may end up doing a follow-up post with a whole bunch of different types of shoes just to see which is the best type of shoe other than a cougar paw. Or maybe there's something better than a cougar paw. I don't know. I've heard, I've heard another home inspector tell me that uh, broom ball shoes work really well on a roof. I'd love to try some of those. But uh, that, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching.